Hello everyone, welcome to the GameSpot stage here at E3 2016. I have an incredible guest with me today. Well, with myself and Justin Haywald. I'm we not incredible. You are, you are incredible. <laughs> you are incredible. You're amazing. <laughs> but instead, I've got Jason Vandenberg. <laughs> Come on. I can't live up to that. You can. the expectation of this place that's not... Anyway. Every you introduction you do at uh, Ubisoft's press conferences, you steal the show every time, so I'm super happy to have you here it's with me. It's great to be here. <laughs> and do you do voiceover work? I, because I do the most amazing placeholder voiceover you've ever heard. <laughs> I am amazed. Let's place... <laughs> Like, this is a serious question. Are you going to have some voice acting of yours in the game? Because you know, I always do. I always have, because I, I, like, I actually do great placeholder VO. Mm. And so I always do all the placeholder, and then every now and then they forget to cut a few of the lines, and so I kind of sneak into the game. So, you know, we'll see. So what lines do you have in For Honor that, that we might get to, to hear? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of... Well, bunch of stuff in the parts of the missions that you haven't played, right? We, we came with our campaign, right? We have these two things, and we've got, we've got all these other missions that we're doing, right? So mm -hmm. those are where all the placeholders are. <laughs> but then we've got I, the real actors who have done the real thing. I was going to say, I imagine you've got, like, grunts and things in there, we, some screams, oh, yes. some yells. We all are in the crowds. We're all absolutely. The, the minion deaths and the... the arg and the... <laughs> rrr and the rah. Yeah, we all get to do those, right? And then the crowd ones are great. We'll, it's fun packing 20 game developers into a sound booth and having us all go, ah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, For Honor, this year, you came off showing your campaign. Hey, story campaign. Can you tell me a little bit how this works? Because there's obviously the three factions. Yes. So are there three separate campaigns? Do they it's intertwine? one campaign. Okay. It's one campaign where you're going to play as the knights and then as the, the Vikings and then as the samurai. So mm -hmm. we're going to divide it into three pieces. One big story, right, to okay. answer this question about um, uh, Apollyon and her Blackstone Legions, this mm -hmm. uh, this group of knights that are that are bringing war, more war to an already war-torn land, right? Uh, yeah. So we're gonna get to know what's going on about these three factions and their warfare, sort of the idea. So, I mean, how, how are they all ending up in the same place? Because, <laughs> I mean, my, my knowledge of history is not that good, but I do know that, right. you know, s ancient samurai, Vikings... Did not, right, the, the samurai did not attack the Vikings... That we know of. That directly. That, directly, <laughs> yes. There was no great Viking in, you know, you know that didn't happen. Um, so, we have an ESR, our, uh, our, uh, our trailer, right, mm. uh, the trailer for that, and that establishes this world where, where it's... There, there had been a prior civilization, and then this bad thing happened, right? <laughs> the, the world gets up, you know, up, uprooted, and we all kind of fall back. Um, and now we're coming back out of that, right, and kind of refilling these ancient fortresses and these ancient sanctuaries and all this, these, this stuff. And, and but we're now we're now these old um, uh, people are bumping up against each other after mm. a long time, and of course uh, the the resources are are, are uh, constrained, right? We're in a better time now, but now. We've been warring for so long, and we have so many years and centuries of ancient warfare to build mm. on, right, that, that, that we're, we're over-prepared, right? And so the wars have just been kind of a natural state. Yeah. And then into that, we bring our villain and uh, the, the, the plan for more war. I'm so going to get a little tinfoil hat here. So you mentioned there was a civilization that came before. Yes. Another famous Ubisoft property has a civilization <laughs> that came before. Are you saying the Forona and Assassin's Creed are in the same universe here? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Yes. Damn it! Good oh. guess, good Damn guess, it. but no, totally different places. Okay. Uh, in fact, like uh, Assassin's Creed is, is wonderful. It's sort of like history, and this is you know sort of built built in our world. I really think of the world of For Honor as kind of like you stepped through the, the the sword fighting looking glass, right? You're yeah. on the other side, right? Where we can where we can rearrange the pieces on the board and do all this wonderful stuff. That's what that you know that long period is all about. But it's a it's a new place. I think of it as inspired by our world, <laughs> right? Mm. Like it's you know it's the it's the way we would want the world to be if what we wanted to do was fight with weapons <laughs> forever. So h how did you narrow it down to just these three? Are you, g because the ones that immediately come to mind, pirates, ninjas, <laughs> are these things that are just going to be DLC yeah. later? Or are you like, no, no, that had to be these three. How did you well, narrow it down? Well, um, it's something we sort of discovered early in the, in the development of the game. Um, it was a question we started asking ourselves. It's kind of a classic tri uh, trio in a lot of ways. I found that I could ask anyone you know, to choose, like Night Viking Samurai, like I can ask, you know, Night Viking or mm. Samurai, isn't it? Uh, uh, night. Night. Samurai. Samurai. Bang, right on it, see? <laughs> now here's the thing, you know the answer to that. You knew that answer before I asked you, mm. right? You made that decision a long time ago. Well, why? Unconsciously. Yes, what's well, that about? So I, I want to be a knight, but with a samurai sword, though. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I can't guarantee you okay. that here. No. Um, uh, what we learned is that I think it's about, it's about what kind of warrior 
you might like to be. I think it's actually about values. Mm. Uh, people who answer knight tend to have this idea of protection, like defending the weak and the sort of the nobility of the thing. They see themselves in that way, right? I'm a knight. I have the knight. <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> an overinflated ego. That's definitely. <laughs> um, I have the uh, overinflated ego. Okay, well, so perfect. Right? Um, people who choose Viking tend to tend to be uh, reflecting a choice about passion and living their life to the fullest and, uh, and intensity and beer and parties. Mm -hmm. um, and then the samurai, people who choose samurai tend to be focused on mastery, right? There's mm -hmm. like the idea of a higher, like there's this higher idea of battle itself and sort of striving for perfection, knowing that you can't ever achieve it, right? And so this idea of, of becoming that, you know, sort of always striving towards those things. Mm. Uh, yes. Those it sounds like you guys have done some, have you guys had like some psychological testing going on in the background here? I might be a big geek on that <laughs> stuff. That might Giants. be a part of my whole thing. Some Rorschach so, tests. Uh, like Viking helmets. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, give, I give talks at the uh, Game Developers Conference every year about player motivation and psychology. Yeah. It's a big part of my shtick. So. Ah. Yes, I am into that for it, sure. That's it, good. that helps, you know, create the best game for the player because you're think so. tailoring it basically yeah, to how people so. behave, how they think. Yeah, find out what people find out how people really think about these things. And I and I, I felt like it, we discovered a, a kind of a personality test, right, inside the, the Western culture because there's it's enough, oh. right? Those three, the Night Viking Samurai, it's enough, right? You can you can you can stop there, right? You could you could add more in, but most of the other ones, they're all kind of in the same realm, right? Like yeah, I mean like ninjas. Yeah, samurai, -ish. Like samurai, exactly. We could add the pirates, are like actual samurai. Pirates of the Vikings. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. You could, right, with the, with those values, you can kind of cluster them, right? Because I think those are maybe maybe those are the three values. I don't know. Do you yeah. play as all three in the campaign, or do you yes. choose which one to be? Okay. No, you play as all three. Um, you okay. play as all three. Um, and in 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 order, it's from this tale that we're telling. Um, you play as the, the you start as the knight, and you play as a character we call the warden, mm. um, which is this knight who is a roaming knight that's come into the land, this this area of the the world, and gets all caught up in in the this local conflict with the Blackstone Legion. Um, we call him the warrior, the warden. It's it's kind of you, right? Um, you can pick your gender, you can pick your uh, your customization. It's kind of who you want to be, right? And then you play through that campaign, and then we switch to the raider, mm. which is the character you see here, and the, right, that's the that's the raider. And again, you can pick and customize. On the, we do the same thing for the samurai. So you play them all three, all, all along. and all along you're finding out what's kind of going on, right? The the backstory. Yeah. Would you think it's more um, beneficial if you play the single player before you? make a bold foray into multiplayer? It, it's definitely there as a place for you to play if you don't want to get your ass handed to it, right? <laughs> it's because like it's, it's, we all know that jumping into a multiplayer environment is can be humiliating, right? Yeah, uh, yeah no thanks. Um, so we'll, we'll have a, a sort of a brief sort of training bit to get you up to speed because we have a very new mechanic, but as early as possible, we're going to open up the door and let you play in the multiplayer. Um, but if you want to really study the characters and get good at that, that's what the single player is for. Mm. The mechanics and the characters like we're seeing here, these are these are the multiplayer characters. They're the same characters. The moves that we see here and the, the, the powers that you're seeing here, almost all of the, the abilities that you have in the single player campaign transfer directly to the multiplayer. So it's really this one world. And it seems a lot of what you've built around that is, is also kind of realistic and, and true, to, true to life. Is there anything fantastical in what you've created as well? Have you seen how big these guys are? <laughs> <laughs> I I, have you, you seen me? I don't I, they're huge. <laughs> I look small on camera, but I'm, like, <laughs> I'm massive. Sinks into the couch. So I love it that you feel that way. I love it that it <laughs> seems real to you, but I can assure you, people aren't like that. Um, uh, this, uh, we think of these, we think of our world as kind of an exalted, exaggerated mm. version of the world. We kind of turn the volume up on a couple of knobs, right? Um, realism is, we're, we're, is, is kind of part of our uh, ambition but we're really not trying to reproduce melee combat here, right? We're trying to reproduce the emotions of melee combat. We're trying to convince you that you're on a battlefield, right? We're trying to immerse you in that and, and feel like you actually have the sword in your hand, right? My favorite feedback when, is when, when people come back after, the, after they play the game and, they, and they're like, oh man, I feel like I've been swinging a sword for hours, right? <laughs> like, what, you mean you're physically tired? They're like, no, 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 it's just I'm just moving my thumbs around. I just yeah. feel like, whoa, it was, whoa, it was intense, you know? Like, that, that's really what we're trying to do is get you there. Um, and of course, you've got a brand new control scheme. How, like, how did you come up with that? Because it's oh quite... Boy. I, am, I assume a lot of iterations. Uh, yes, it, um, but it had its origins. Uh, it's gonna you, it's gonna sound like a story, like I'm making it up, but this actually happened. Um, so uh, about 13 years ago now, um, I took a course in mm. what's called German Longsword, uh, which is the style of combat that you see with the warden doing, uh, mm. kind of, it's inspired by that. Um, and I was so impressed, I was so struck by 
how simple the system was and how clear and sort of learnable and intuitive that it was is I was like, well, what would happen if we took this and we put it like on the right stick? Or we took that system and we tried to put it there, right? Mm. And very quickly, the basics of the control scheme that you see with the lock here and the attacks here, right? All that kind of clicked in place. Um, and I got really excited. I was like, oh my God, this, I think this would work. I think you would feel the way I feel when I do this. You would, you would feel like you're on a battlefield. Oh, this would be amazing. So I started pitching it. Mm. <laughs> and for 10 years, <laughs> it was no, 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 <laughs> right? Like, no thanks, no, no good, that won't be fun, it won't yep. work, blah, blah, blah. And then I pitched it at Ubisoft Montreal uh, for, uh, to the GM there. And ironically, the answer was no. Oh. The answer was, but it was no but. Right? Ah. <laughs> no but, I'd like you to meet this team. And okay. uh, I met, I got, was introduced to um, Steph Cardin and the, the, what was called the Fox team at that time. And they're amazing. This team is just incredible. And they adopted me. They, they, they were looking for a creative director and they adopted me as their, as a puppy. I was like, you know, I want to come home. <laughs> I'm going to come home. And we made the game. So Jace, with Oh, sorry. We are out of time. I'm getting the call in my ear. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. When can we play For Honor? Uh, it's February 14th, 2017, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. We got co-op. <laughs> we got split screen. So it's going to be a great date game. It's perfect. Thank you so much for more on For Honor and all the games here at E3. Make sure you stay tuned to GameSpot.com. You're watching the GameSpot stage, brought to you by Airheads.